Hey class, welcome to week 19. If you check out the board behind me, we've got our 10 key terms of the week up here. Now the key terms are designed to go along with our notes on cycles, the cycles of nature. Remember, there's a lot more cycles in nature than the couple that we're gonna go through on the board, the water cycle, the carbon cycle, nitrogen cycle, and the rock cycle. There's others, and also the rock cycle, that very last one on the list. That's kind of a review from sixth grade, but you might remember that that came at the tail end of sixth grade. You guys, being seventh graders, are going to review it just a little bit because our sixth grade year ended on kind of a goofy note because uh, around March 13th of last year is when we started doing our distance learning. So let's jump on in and check out some of the key terms. Most of these should look pretty familiar to you. Evaporation, transpiration might be a new one right here. Uh, this is a special form of evaporation that happens with trees. This is how trees lose their water. If you check out aquifer, that goes along with the groundwater that we're gonna be talking about, and we've already talked about quite a bit. If you look back on some of our previous notes, remember we're in week 19 now, that's 19 weeks of notes here, and many times we've talked about these things previously in the class. This is definitely a week where everything kind of comes together from different things. For example, when we talk about the atmosphere, atmosphere is up here, Previously, we went through the layers of the atmosphere, the troposphere, the exosphere, and so forth. And please always go back on the previous notes. It's meant to be your reference. That's why we keep a continuous notebook. If you've missed anything, check out pacificascience.org, where I also want to point out that these notes are posted. They're also in your Google Classroom. One of the ones I want to start off talking about is carbon sink. Carbon sink is, you might remember, a place where we're storing carbon out of the atmosphere. Our oceans act in a way as a big carbon sink. Remember, on the carbon cycle, we are constantly adding carbon dioxide to our atmosphere with burning fossil fuels. That's one of the things that has been increasing the greenhouse effect. And again, review here, you might remember a little greenhouse effect is a good thing. Our planet needs it to stay warm, stay just the right temperature. Uh, on the flip side, the greenhouse effect gets increased when you add carbon dioxide to our atmosphere because it's a greenhouse gas. You might remember so was methane, CH4. Methane, also a flammable gas that was getting released, if you remember last week's notes, uh, from the old landfill there at the Shoreland Amphitheater. That was kind of a goofy tie in there. Methane from bacteria was heading up into the atmosphere, and every once in a while you could actually see it getting lit on fire by accident at the Shoreland Amphitheater right down here in Mountain View, California. A uh, quick thing about the carbon sink, and I want to mention it in terms of our classroom, and I'm pointing towards the door of the classroom right here. Right outside the door of the classroom, I've got a couple plants growing. One of my little hobbies, I guess, is to grow uh, you know, things like oak trees, sequoia trees from seeds. Partly we do it in class, of course, as examples of how seeds grow. We have different types of seeds that we talk about a little bit later on. But I just want to point out a carbon sink uh, thing real quick, and it's something that I personally enjoy. And it's this right here. Let me hold this up to the screen. I don't know if you can really see it too well, but if you look at the tiny, tiny little seed right there, that is a sequoia tree seed just after it sprouted. Sequoia trees are a type of redwood tree. They grow in California. And I love planting them, not just to think that that tiny little seed, it's a gymnosperm, which means naked seed, it is a, one of the smallest seeds, yet it turns into one of the largest living things on the planet in terms of biomass. Um, also, it's a fantastic carbon sink. It is, if you remember photosynthesis, a great place to store carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide through photosynthesis gets stored in those trees. Planting trees is a fantastic way to pull carbon out of the atmosphere. And of course, you remember from our current event study, CNN 10 and so forth, uh, our environment's really been taken on the chin lately in terms of things like the rainforest getting uh, destroyed in giant fires that they've set on purpose sometimes so that they can farm and you can graze animals. So planting trees is a great way to combat the greenhouse effect and global warming, uh, too much of a greenhouse effect. Uh, quick review over here, you might remember, Earth's atmosphere is about 78% nitrogen. I'm reviewing that because when we talk about the nitrogen cycle, there's a special thing I wanna mention about bacteria. And then also Mars. Mars' atmosphere is about 95% carbon dioxide. You might remember again from Mark Watney and the Martian movie. Again, that comes up in just a second when I switch the screens here. Sometimes students ask, well, wait a second. If it's 95% carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide is a global warming gas, why is it Mars really, really warm instead of very, very cold? 
And it is mostly carbon dioxide. However, it's got a very thin atmosphere. Um, it does have windstorms, it does have weather, but it's not enough to really retain its heat very well. Remember, the warmest day on Mars is about the coldest day uh, here on Earth in Antarctica. So it's extraordinarily cold there. That's why Mark Watney was having such a hard time staying warm. That's why you might remember he used a radioactive isotope that puts out heat to try and keep them a little bit warmer on that fictional book about surviving on Mars and using bacteria to grow potatoes, potato plants on Mars. All right, switching up the screens here. We watched a tiny clip from Bill and I, the science guy. We're gonna check out a little bit from Brain Pop next time. And we're gonna go into a little bit more detail on this last one down here, the, uh, the rock cycle. Again, that's a review from sixth grade. But once again, I know sixth grade was a little bit goofy the way it ended up. And so we want to make sure we really understand that cycle and how it relates to the atmosphere. All right, so jumping on in here, the second part of our notes, all of these uh, have, have more detail on them in the notes that are online. So do check out the notes online. But the water cycle, mainly driven by the sun, you've got evaporation, transpiration from trees, precipitation, snow, sleet, hail, rain. And one thing that didn't make it onto here, but again, it's on your online notes, is an aquifer, the places where we keep groundwater. This is also one of the things that's very important in central California where we keep groundwater and we pump it out in wells to uh, use for irrigation for farms. Sometimes aquifers, which are a great storage spot for water, get overused. And there are many places in the Central Valley where they're over pumping water from aquifers and the ground is actually sinking there. So that's one of the things that we'll talk about a little, a little bit later. Also in terms of something called fracking, which is where we're pumping uh, water and chemicals into the ground to force oil out. You might remember that. Uh, the carbon cycle, the carbon cycle, extraordinarily important. And again, go back on some of your notes. When you look at something like this, Remember this big lump of coal that I mentioned a little while ago? This particular one came from my grandfather's backyard in, in West Virginia. Uh, this one right here, a big lump of coal is the remains of once living thing, mainly plants that lived over 300 million years ago. This right here is a carbon sink. This is carbon that's locked up. And the carbon cycle is the one that us humans are doing a good job of throwing off balance a little bit because we're burning fossil fuels, that's adding more carbon to the atmosphere to that part of the cycle than would naturally be released. So that's one of the reasons that global warming greenhouse effect has been accelerated over the last hundred years. The nitrogen cycle is much more complicated than it looks here. The main takeaway from the nitrogen cycle is this. It's really driven by bacteria. Going back to Mark Watney, going back to why we showed the Martian, the nitrogen cycle wouldn't happen were it not for nitrogen fixing bacteria. That's bacteria that's in the soil that pulls nitrogen out of the air. And also denitrification, which is not a key term, but it's, it's bacteria that puts nitrogen back into the atmosphere. Remember, we need nitrogen for proteins. We need nitrogen for DNA, for nucleic acids. Very important element in terms of the biological molecules but we can't get it directly from the air. Even though our air is 78% nitrogen, roughly, we can't just pull it and breathe it in out of the air. We need bacteria. So that's a real key theme throughout the year is that even though we're you know, large animals and large uh, trees outside, you can't uh, live without tiny, tiny bacteria doing the job of pulling the nitrogen out of the air. Finally, the last thing was the rock cycle. The rock cycle, the ones in the squares here, the rectangles, sedimentary, igneous, and metamorphic rock, the three main types of rock. If you're looking at the three main types of rock, you notice that magma here, or lava, is not in a box. It's not a rock, it's a liquid form of igneous rock. Once it cools, this becomes igneous rock in the rock cycle. The rocks are constantly cycling between each other. This will be the theme for the end of the week lecture. It's also important to note that the rock cycle does influence the atmosphere as well. You might remember that there would be carbon dioxide in our atmosphere, even if people and animals weren't breathing because of the rock cycle. The rock cycle is constantly bringing carbon dioxide, releasing it to the atmosphere through volcanoes. And the, the, the plants doing their photosynthesis pull the carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere. Uh, remember, we need plants. Plants, well, they could, they could take us or leave us. They don't really need us that much because they've got enough carbon dioxide in our atmosphere without 
animals breathing. So that was a quick overview of the notes. Please go online to check out pacificascience.org or your Google Classroom. That's where the notes are. They've also been emailed home. There is a test due on Friday, not Wednesday as usual because we have a slightly shorter week. And there is also um, our key terms, those 10 that you saw on the first board, those 10 key terms are also due as usual on Friday. Have a wonderful, wonderful week 19, everyone, everyone and I will see you again online. Bye-bye.